From the UN Hussman School of Journalism and Media, connecting Carolina's campus and community. This is Carolina Week. Good morning, Tar Heels, and thanks for joining us for Carolina Week. I'm Julian Berger. And I'm Sarah Gray Barr. We start with the latest updates on COVID-19 across campus. The COVID positivity rate at UNC is dropping. But what does that mean for campus coronavirus protocols? We go live to reporter Kelly Kendall at South Pudding with the latest. The university seems happy with the numbers, even sending out a campus-wide email late last week. The positivity rate on campus is currently just below 13%. Just for comparison, at its highest point in January, the positivity rate was around 21% during the second week of the semester. But does that mean protocols are changing on campus? The university says no. Masks should still be worn indoors, and you should get tested if you feel symptomatic. But testing hours have changed. The on-campus testing sites will now operate on reduced hours. You can get tested on Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., and Fridays from 9 a.m. to noon. The testing sites will remain closed on Saturdays and Sundays. Reporting live from South Building, Kelly Kendall, Carolina Week. And the university is also making it easier for students to access health care. Healthy Heels announced Monday Campus Health will no longer have a weekend access charge. This means in-person students can now visit Campus Health on the weekends without paying a $50 fee. UNC has announced Spring Commencement Speaker, a New York Times bestseller and columnist alum Frank Bruni. Bruni started his career as a journalist right here in Chapel Hill. Bruni graduated in 1986 and has since served as a White House correspondent, an op-ed columnist, and a restaurant food critic for the New York Times. Spring commencement is set for May 8th. Getting into Carolina is always an impressive achievement, but getting into the university these days is harder than ever. UNC received a record number of first-year applications during this year's application process. The admissions team is looking at over 57,000 applications with expectations to accept less than 5,000 first year applicants. Those who applied by October 15th found out in late January if they were accepted into the university. Those who applied by January 15th will hear back in late March. With the election coming up, college students are discussing politics more and more. Carolina Week's Capitol reporter Stephen Schlink joins us to share one UNC student's first step into politics. Stephen? That's right, Sarah Gray, and students aren't just talking more about politics, they're engaging in their cause, and one candidate gave UNC students the opportunity to do just that. College students make up a large part of the vote in elections, but some students say candidates often overlook this group in the campaign process. I think there's been a void in campaign candidate outreach to the youth for, for some time. Meet yeah. Tyler Smith. That, he was the co-captain of Youth for Jeff, a group formed to support current state Senator Jeff Jackson in his bid for U.S. Senate. Smith says that Senator Jackson embraced involvement from college students. He actually made like a concrete, legitimate, and genuine effort to reach out to our population. Part of this campaign effort was to host town halls on college campuses across the state, two of which took place at UNC and both had a great turnout. Uh, according to our best estimates, was the second largest event of the Democratic primary. In December, Senator Jackson withdrew from the race, but according to Smith, this momentum of college student political involvement does not need to stop. I would love to see more uh, more youth engagement from other candidates, and, on, and that's on every level. He says this is important because this age group has a message. So we aren't the, you know, we're actively bucking that uh, that that stereotype that we're lazy and we don't care about anything and we just want to go around in college and have fun. No, we have serious issues. 
Smith believes any candidate can involve the younger generation, and he hopes to see them do so. Tyler Smith says that although he was campaigning for Jackson, his hope is that candidates on both sides will actively engage in the youth vote throughout their campaigns and also utilize youth who are willing to work for their cause. Reporting live, Stephen Schlink, Carolina Week. Thanks, Stephen. If you're interested in inclusive research or the history of race at UNC, there are two speaker series this week for students to attend. The School of Social Work's first Black History Month research series features a Zoom webinar tomorrow at noon about anti-racism in research. Sign up to attend at thewell.unc.edu slash home slash in the know. Race and Memory at UNC is an in-person event presented by history professor William Sturkey and local civil rights activist Danita Mason Hogans. Visit Hyde Hall at 2 p.m. on Friday to explore the racial history of Chapel Hill. RSVP by emailing ploth at email.unc.edu. And for even more Black History Month events on campus, you can visit diversity.unc.edu. A brand new Latin restaurant and bar open its doors in Chapel Hill this week. Buena Vibra will feature Latin food, drinks, and music. The restaurant is located in the old location of Country Fried Duck, but was renovated to feature vibrant colors and lighting. The owners plan to feature DJs showcasing Latin music as well as karaoke nights. Most UNC students are familiar with their classrooms, dorm rooms, and dining hall. But did you know that there's a place you can go to make music or even record a podcast? Reporter Anna Gabarro has more. Creativity is one of the qualities that best describes a Tar Heel. For students who want to expand their imaginative skills through sound, our campus has a perfect space to embrace them, the Bead Lab. What may seem like one more building on campus is in fact a lot to offer for creative students. The Beat Lab is located on Hill Hall's first floor and all students from all majors are welcome. Let's have a look. Um, we've had computer science students, we've had chemical engineering students, we've, oh gosh, everywhere, everybody, journalism students. I think the best thing about this space is that they're able to access machines that they can't access anywhere else, right? Like we have turntables, we have synthesizers, we have stuff that you just can't keep in your apartment. So if you have a class project going on where you need to record a podcast, this is a great space to come and do it. If you're recording a song, same deal. We have all sorts of mics here. Students say it's a place to learn more about sound and each other. You meet so many new people, you get a chance to try so many new things, you get a chance to be around people who share the same interests and passions as you do. I get to learn something new every single time that I come in. Um, we explore synthesizers, DJ equipment, oh, if you're looking for just some good energy and great sounds, come on through. It's always a good day to embrace a new hobby on campus, and the Beat Lab welcomes you to do so. Whether or not you had a Valentine this Valentine's Day, some Carolina moms came to campus to make sure everyone felt the love. After several suicides on campus last semester, a group of moms came together to create a group called Happy, also known as Hugs and Pups Posse, encouraging and empowering. Hosting events around campus, the group hopes to help students decompress and feel loved and supported. This Valentine's Day, Happy organized a drive-by puppy parade where students could pet dogs, receive words of encouragement, mom hugs, and free goodie bags. UNC students are enjoying the sunny skies and temperatures in the upper 50s, but a big change with weather is coming. You're going to need an umbrella towards the end of the week. Let's check in now with meteorologist Corey Kowitz about the timing and impacts of the rain heading our way. Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Corey Coates. We have a beautiful on day on tap for your Wednesday. A lot of dry and warm air working its way through the Gulf up to our region. That's where we're gonna see temperatures in the mid 60s, a beautiful day. And believe it or not, on Thursday, it's gonna be even warmer. Temperatures in the mid to, mid to low 70s. So it's the warmest temperatures, temperatures We've seen all winter, it's going to be very spring-like. However, we do have a chance of some rain Thursday night into Friday morning. This, the system starts off as a pretty impressive looking rainmaker with a nice line of rain. But as it makes its way through east 
and passes through Appalachian to breaks up considerably, and ends up being a more moderate scattered showers by the time it gets to us. So not a big rainmaking event. But as it dries out and the cold front comes through on the cold end of it, we're going to get some really, really chilly temperatures by Friday night into Saturday morning. A low of 31 is projected in the RDU region. Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to see our warmest temperatures. Thursday is going to be 74. Friday is going to be a little chillier, but late morning. It's when the cold front is projected to come through, and it's going to get colder as the day wears on, all the way down to the high 20s, maybe the low 30s, Friday night into Saturday morning, which leads me to the weekend. On the dry end of that pattern, we're going to see some seasonably cool temperatures and dry conditions by the weekend. So we're seeing some warm spring-like temperatures, which shows you that spring is certainly on its way. Back to you guys. A UNC student has opened Chapel Hill's newest restaurant, and it's right on Franklin Street. Reporter Kenzie Master has the story. Will Gerstein is a sophomore in the Keenan Flagler Business School. He opened his second restaurant, Buckets, Friday night. It's, it's a drunk late night kind of restaurant. Um, and so that's what that is. Over nine to one, we serve chicken and waffles, boneless wings, chicken tenders, chicken sandwiches. We do these ice cream waffle desserts, which is kind of our specialty. Will's goal is to create an atmosphere that makes students excited. He says he wants to change the way Chapel Hill sees late night food. We really see it today with I Heart New You Pizza and Cosmic and Time Out as something that like, ugh, like I have to go pick up food. Uh, Buckets is a place for students to get greasy food, listen to music and not have to wait in line all night. You're not going to go there and just stand in line all night. So there's QR codes. You scan them, you order, and then once you order, you're good to do whatever you want to do. I know a lot of people walk away for 10 minutes, and they hang out with their friends, and, you know, somewhere in the parking lot. People, we have tons of outdoor seating. They kind of sit down and wait. Buckets is COVID-friendly and offers only outdoor seating. It's open Thursday through Saturday. That was Kenzie Master reporting, and that certainly sounds like it could be a new late night spot on Franklin. Can't wait to check it out. Now it's time for sports. Let's go to Sports Extra anchor Jacob Karabatsis to tell us more about the Tar Heels this week. Jacob? I'm certainly going to have to stop and get a bucket of those wings tonight after the basketball game. But before we get to basketball, the UNC women's tennis team is the second team in history to win a three-peat at the ITA National Team Indoor Championship. Carolina faced Oklahoma in the finals, and the Sooners won the doubles point. In the singles matches, the Heels made a major comeback despite winning only two first sets. Elizabeth Scotty and Fiona Crawley both grabbed points in straight sets, and Carolina had to battle mightily to win two more matches in third set nail biters. Junior Annika Yarlagata finished the championship strong with three double-handed backhands followed by three powerful forehands in the third set to win Carolina's final point. The University of National Champions beat Oklahoma 4-2 and remains undefeated this season with a record of 11-0. The UNC men's tennis team is also off to a tremendous start and looks to maintain a win streak when they face off against NC State tomorrow. The Heels head into tomorrow's match with an undefeated record when playing at home, following a major 4-2 win against South Carolina on Sunday. Senior Brian Cernock has been a huge help for the Heels so far, and Cernock's singles win on Sunday clinched Carolina's upset win against the Gamecocks. The Heels have won the past 10 matchups against State and hope to continue their dominance when they host the Wolfpack tomorrow at 4 p.m. Speaking of successful spring sports, the Heels softball team is headed west to face Elon in a midweek game at 4.30 today. The Heels have been looking strong as the team is currently 4-0 for the first time since 2012. Carolina took an 8-3 victory against South Carolina and a 5-0 win against Virginia during the weekend. This home run by Kiana Jones gave Carolina the lead against the Gamecocks on Sunday. Carolina enters the game hot and hopes to keep that momentum going into the matchup against Elon. Softball and tennis are killing it here at Carolina but some Tar Heels are looking ahead to their professional careers. Five Tar Heels have received invites to the NFL Combine. 
Sam Howe, Marcus McKeithen, Joshua Azudu, Jeremiah Gimmel, and Ty Chandler look to showcase their individual talents and impress NFL scouts March 1st through the 7th at Lucas Oil Stadium. Who knows? Come August, we could have our very own Tar Heels suit up in a different shade of blue and white. And we all know how well that worked out when All-Pro starting center Jeff Saturday won the Colts a Super Bowl in 2007. Jumping back to Carolina sports, the UNC women's basketball team is looking to bounce back from a tough loss at Virginia Tech. The number 24 Tar Heels will face number three Louisville in an exciting ACC matchup Thursday night. UNC has been averaging more than 74 points per game and shooting 41% from the field. The Heels are going to need a big night from UNC's leading scorer, Deja Kelly, who has been averaging better than 15 points a game, and Alyssa Usby, who's averaging more than 13 points per game and grabbing five and a half boards. The Tar Heels need to play amazing defense against the Cards, who are in the top 10 nationally in three-pointers made. The key to a UNC victory is defending the arc and keeping Louisville's players on their toes. The UNC men's team is looking to defeat the Pittsburgh Panthers tonight. Looking for their third straight victory after wins against Clemson and Florida State, the Heels will need to be ready to play against a Pitt team on a two-game win streak of its own. Look for an important matchup in the post as Armando Baycott takes on John Hughley with both big men top five in ACC rebounding. UNC is coming down the stretch of an up-and-down season but finds itself sitting fourth in the ACC, only one game out of first. The North Carolina swim and dive teams traveled to Atlanta Tuesday to kick off the five-day competition at the ACC Championships. The heels started off strong, qualifying for the finals in all events. The men's 800 free relay not only qualified, but went on to establish a new school record with a time of 6 minutes and 26.96 seconds. In the three-meter springboard, last year's gold medalist Anton Down Jenkins took silver, and his teammate Alex Hart took bronze for the heels. Carolina continues the competition today, with finals airing at 6 p.m. on the ACC Network. Representing UNC Chapel Hill is one thing, but as Kai Hayes tells us, representing the country you come from dives into a deeper meaning. Aranza Vasquez got to experience something in her freshman year of college that many don't accomplish in a lifetime, diving for her home country in the 2020 Olympic Games. I never thought that I was going to make it to the Olympics that year, or like 2020, 2021. Like, I never thought it was going to be that close. I thought 2024 was like for sure my year. But Vasquez was being a little too humble as she blew her competition out of the water. But then COVID came. Uh, 2021, we had another competition. We went to the World Cup. I started having good results, like my results at the World Cup were one of the uh, best results in Mexico. Vasquez might have been surprised by her performance, but these are the type of results head coach Yadel Gamboa expects. We're going to ACC, so we're going to NCAA. The better the opponents are, the better she's going to dive. Gamboa, an accomplished diver himself, knows what it takes to guide Vasquez toward gold. And then nothing is going to be given to you. You got to go out and train hard and go get it. It's, it's just uh, the way it goes in any athletic tennis sport. Coach Gamboa's gold standard philosophy has been fuel for Vasquez's fire as she uses her Olympic experience and NCAA success to motivate her. I've definitely grown as, as a diver, and even if sometimes I just don't see it. <laughs> what we will probably see is a repeat Olympics appearance, this time to Paris in 2024. I'm Kai Hayes reporting. They call us the University of National Champions. Well, we might have to add to that and make it the University of National and Olympic Champions. Well, that does it for sports. Tune into Sports Extra this Friday for a full weekend preview in Carolina athletics. Thanks, Jacob. This year, Americans exchanged more than 145 million Valentine's Day cards. And one North Carolina woman has thousands of them. But her collection is all about history and culture. Jacob Karabatsas took a break from sports to hear her story. Yeah, yeah, I'm a person who collects a lot of things, which I guess makes me a little bit of an escapist. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word collectibles? Sports cards? Records? Well, 
For Burlington, North Carolina native Jolene Slifka, it's Valentine's. Thousands of Valentine's that she displays on her vintage Valentine Museum website. Funny enough, it didn't start as being for anyone but me. And it was because I kept researching and finding things and writing notes, and I would lose the notes. And so I thought, if I just put them online, then I'll be able to find it again. Jolene is now part of a network of hundreds of people who buy, sell, and trade Valentines, an intimate art form with a unique history. And if we lose or ignore our history, good things, heroes, warts, all of it, you don't really know exactly where you are or even who you are. This fascination led her to join the National Valentine's Collectors Association Facebook page, run by Nancy Rosen. It's all on Facebook, but lots of people, almost, almost 900 people on that site who are just intrigued by Valentine's Day. Yes, Valentine's is, um, collectors are a passionate bunch who believe the art um, lies within the heart. Of course, there are stories about uh, some of the artists who did this painting used to wet their their brush with their lips and they would get lead poisoning. Wow. But but this is really an unusually beautiful piece because of all of the, the this is really the lace paper design that they've highlighted with with the color. When you see a collection like Jolene's, it won't look like a cheap Valentine you see in the store today with candy attached. It will be things like an elaborate early 1900s Dutch shoe made by Frances Brundage, a female entrepreneur who created jobs at the turn of the century. It's also good to remember people like Frances Brundage. She's probably really the innovator of factory methods, you know, long before Ford was was doing that. It's easy to see why these collections have such appeal. Some of the Valentines are mechanical, some have to be assembled, and some display art in its purest form. This is another one I was talking about, the honeycomb tissue. And the tissue has been airbrushed, and if you can see the coloring on it, and it's got a barometer of love. For these collectors, it's clear that Valentine's Day is much more than just a box of chocolates. As one of Jolene's Valentine's inscriptions says, I thought that in the theft, dear, you'd never take part, but I have to arrest you for stealing my heart. I'm Jacob Karabatsis, reporting. Where would you find Sarah Grace? Did you get a Valentine's Day card? Oh, I got a Valentine's card, but it was from my mom. Well, mom's love is the best type of love. That does it for this edition of Carolina Week. Make sure to join us next week for the latest campus news. Have a great weekend.